Well guys, I don't know how much this has got. This camera's actually acting up on me now too. I'm having a heck of a time here. My cameras. Um, anyway, we're running the overhead on this. Got the rockers and the ejectors in it. Okay, so uh, fire in order. These things are pretty easy to do. I gotta get a bigger gauge out. So, it, this is your preference. I, I haven't adjusted any of these yet. I just bolted them back on there, and I know I need to practice what I preach. You should have backed these off. Uh, I didn't have the header resurface or anything. I know there's some guys on there. Well, you got to, they're going to tell me about it anyway, if that's okay. Um, so, here's your firing order. It's right on the intake manifold. One, two, seven, three, four, five, six, eight. So, you're going to run the crankshaft dampener. There's a timing marker up there on the top, a pointer, and line that up. I had my pistons. Number one piston over here was at top dead center, but what it is, it's at top dead center exhaust. Um, intakes on the right bank, which would be one, two, one, three, five, seven, and then two, four, six, eight are the evens on this side. Uh, so they want you to start on number one, but I'm not starting on number one. So I know that number three, it has valve lash on it. So I know that it's, it's cylinder. If you look at the firing order, it tells you right here, one, two, so you're going to adjust number four and five. So look at number four, two, four. These are both loose, so we're going to adjust those. Let me get a nine sixteenths and a flat blade screwdriver and a feeler gauge. And we'll go 10 on intake, 25 on the exhaust. All right, so. And on, on the, they're exactly backwards on these 3208s, the intake valves are staggered towards the front of the engine on the right bank on the odds and on the evens they're on the back and vice versa for the exhaust so we're on number four and we're going to do the intake on it let me lay on my belly here Wait a second, I'm wrong. It's 15 and 25. I was wrong. Let me... Uh, where is that valve cover with that data plate? And I can double check. It should be on the valve cover. Well... Yeah, it's 15 and 25. But every other cat in the world. Fifteen intake, twenty-five exhaust. I was don't know why I was thinking ten and twenty-five. That is wrong. Oh, so the intakes are gonna be on the back side of the the back one on that cylinder. If you can see anything or not. All right, Just snug them up. You know, I was watching a guy on the internet do a valve adjustment the other day, and he wasn't. He was torquing these down with a torque wrench, and he wasn't even holding the center screw. And I was thinking, well, that's not going to be very. Then he was pulling about as hard as he could to get the feeler gauge out from under it. And I'm thinking, well, it's not going to be very accurate if you don't hold the center. It's going to turn on you. Just like that. You kind of got to need to hold the center there. and Make sure it doesn't cinch down tight on you. And, I mean, granted, you've got a feeler gauge in there. It can't go too much. But I don't know. I'll try to be as accurate as I possibly can. But Some guys don't think it makes much of a distance or... A difference on valve adjustment but most of those guys haven't done much on 60 series Detroit's because I tell you what I've learned out throughout the years those things are kind of finicky about that kind of stuff mm. we used to get them 60 series on those early 12.7 liters and I mean they would eat cams because the intake valves would get too tight and they just eat cams on them and Detroit, I think, changed their intervals back then. It was a hundred thousand, and they changed it to fifty thousand to run the valves on them. If I remember right, it's been a while, but I might be wrong about that. Somebody can fact check me. 
Okay, so the intakes are on the other side on this one. They're they're backwards from what Turn it. See it turn? Oh, they're right there, and I can't really hold it. <clears throat> this one here, I'm pretty loose. You know, just kind of double check yourself to make sure you're not doing something backwards like I tend to do sometimes. Is do kind of a check with it with your feeler gauge before you even back it off. And see if it's, make sure you're right. Make sure, you know, you've got your, your 25,000th feeler gauge on the exhaust valve and not on the intake. Okay. Alright, so... So obviously, we're going far in order. The next ones we're going to be doing is number six and eight, since we did number four and five. So what you do now, your timing pointer is at the top, where it's really hard to see, and there's a TDC mark on the adapter, and you line it up. So what you're going to do is make a mark at, well, actually just take the TDC and rotate it 180 degrees from where it presently is at, which it's about right here, so you want to put it over there on the bottom. You know, basically you want to take it from the 12, well, if it's set the 12 o'clock position, take it to the 6 o'clock position, or 180 degrees. And then you'll do 6 and 8, and then you'll go back around to the, and line it back up on the pointer on top, because this one don't have a VS pointer, like they're talking about. But uh, then you line it back up, and you'll do the next one to fire in order, and so on and so forth. See, I've turned it 180 degrees, number 6 and number 8 are loose so let's just do both intakes since they're right here which are going to be on the back side of the cylinder and like i said you can kind of check them so take your 15 thousandth feeler gauge and try to get it in there and it's it's loose will the 25 fit kind of <laughs> What the heck am I? Am I thinking backwards here? See, I gotta check myself. <laughs> I gotta check myself here. Let's look it up real quick. Make sure that I'm not telling you wrong. Well, I got you on the line here. Uh, here we go. Um, front of the engine intake is the darked out ones. Yeah, that's right. The intakes are the back ones on the left hand bank. They're showing the fan there. So, yeah, intakes, 15 thousandths, exhaust is 25. It's almost like somebody ran them backwards. It's kind of what it looks like. Somebody ran the valves backwards because I kept my rocker shafts orientated to where they came off like they came on, went, you know, went on like they came off. That's what I think. Let's just adjust. County's doing a bunch of road work here. A lot of dump trucks and a lot of iron moving right now. Alright. And let's just go to the intake back here I see now this one's tight <sighs> based on a lot of things that I found on this loader since they bought this thing I've worked on it and 
A lot of rinky-dink stuff has been done to it, I know that. It'd be nice once we get these rockers and uh, get all this adjusted. And then that'll be all the engine, the, you know, the finite type stuff will be done. Twenty-five thousandths on the top, and there goes the end wrench. Now we got to go climb down and get it. Okay, well, twenty-five on the exhaust. So basically, what you're going to do, you're going to roll one hundred and eighty degrees again, and then you're just going to do look for the next firing ones on the intake manifold, the firing order, which is going to be one and two. So those one and this is number. Uh, yeah, where's my phone at? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Odds are on the right, evens are on the left. So, so this will be two, one, one and two will be the front two cylinders on each bank. And then you'll, they, or they'll both be loose. And you'll adjust the intakes and exhaust on those. And it's kind of, you can kind of tell right now. Let's see, you know, this is an intake valve. See, this one's on the intake stroke because the intake's open. So you know that it's going to be the next one to come up on top dead center compression. So that's another way you can tell. Hey right, guys, so I... I'm getting there. I've got called off this twice today. So I only, I didn't get here till noon and I got called out of here about two o'clock and then I had to, I came back. And yeah, I didn't really, I didn't get called out twice. I had to leave and go get a part and then come back that I left at the shop. I left one of the damn injectors at the shop. So anyways, um, yeah, cleaned all eight injectors in the solvent tank and somehow I had my head at my rear end and left one of them in the solvent tank. So anyways, uh, getting late here i just got to put the exhaust manifolds on it and then hook this intake back up and then fire it up so i will definitely show you guys when i fire it up that'll probably be a short video about that thanks for watching man